Okay. Uh, hi, everybody. Uh, thanks for being here. My name is Fernando Garcia. Um, a little about myself is I'm a software and data engineer from Mexico. I have worked with Eat Candy Technologies, which is a plugin company based in Mexico City. Uh, I play the guitar, like technology in general, and currently I'm doing my master's in sound and music computing at Universitat Pompeu Fabra in Barcelona. So we will talk about uh, continuous delivery, continuous integration for audio plugins. A uh, few things to mention before we start is like this talk is going to be a beginner friendly approach. Um, it, if you don't know nothing about continuous delivery integration with GitHub Actions, for example, this could be a good place to start. So uh, expect, expect that. And of course, this is not, not a deep dive because most of this knowledge is based on experience. And yeah, we will present a base case with a Just plugin and how we can make examples of making a G, uh, GitHub Actions pipeline to work. Okay? So, all the code is available in, in this GitHub repository. Uh, you will see that I prepared some uh, versions of the pipeline at different stages because it would increase a little bit in complexity. So, feel free to, to follow up. And we need to start of kind of defining CI CD uh, in a nutshell. And this is, of course, an oversimplification of the concept because it's a quite a broad topic. But we can think of it of continuous integration uh, as, the, as the actions we do in order to constantly mer me make merges into the, our current main code base and make tests in order to catch bugs early, for example, right? And the other big concept is continuous delivery, which is uh, the, the actions that you do in order to deploy your, your plugin, to make your piece of so software, uh, make a version that you can share, for example, for your clients, right? So, why to care about plugin development for audio development? Well, it gives you uh, quite nice advantages. First of, all, first of all, it gives you uh, consistency across cross platforms. For example, if you are running on Windows, you can make your plugin work on Mac using GitHub Actions Pipeline, which is super convenient if you are just working on one operating system. And there's a lot of great things to, to talk about. It ensures the code is always deployable, uh, improves the code quality in general, cat, uh, helps to catch bugs because you can run unit tests on, on your plugin. And it's about, <clears throat> about automation, basically. So. Uh, let, let me present a case where the, uh, GitHub Actions pipelines could come in handy. Like, meet, meet Juan, okay? Juan is a young developer uh, responsible for this super cool company that he, de he develops plugins. And he has um, this awesome plugin that he wants to pitch to an investor in order to potentially get funding. What is the problem? That, uh, the problem is that Juan's desktop looks something like this. And I hope this is not also your case, but he by mistake sends the wrong version of the plugin to this, to this client. And a version that has bugs that he wasn't even running. And was, Juan was like, uh, it worked on my computer, so I don't know what happened. So uh, that is the problem that a GitHub Action Pipeline could improve in, in, our, in this scenario. And uh, therefore, Juan is sad because the, the, the investor decided to, to pass on Juan's project, right? So uh, the intuition behind, behind an a example GitHub pipeline is we can think of this way. Uh, we have our source code, and we have some black box for now that is the GitHub actions that we will talk about. And if everything goes OK, your plugin is working, then the pipeline, as we call it, uh, will uh, make your code deployable. So you can uh, it automatically builds, makes the installers, and uploads to your website. So the, the client could download it. Right? And if everything goes wrong, it reports back the, the bug to the developers in order to, to, to fix it and then continue. Right? So uh, why do we use GitHub Actions? Well, it, it has a lot of great advantages. And it's well integrated with GitHub, which is a site that you might be familiar already. Uh, it is a closed platform. You can uh, basically borrow some Microsoft computing power you can uh, borrow a runner that runs on Linux, uh, a, a runner that runs on Mac and Windows and stuff. And it has a lot of great community support. So it is, it is great. Uh, but most importantly, it is free. Okay? okay? But it's actually not, not completely free. It has an awesome free tier that you can, you can use. Um, yeah, it's, uh, feel free to check out. You, you, you are uh, given up uh, some amount of minutes, computing power minutes that you can use, and some amount of storage that you can use for, for the things that you are developing on top of this. Um, OK, what do we need, first of all, to work with a, in a base case with, with Juice and GitHub Actions? Uh, first of all, we need to move from producer to CMake. 
And I won't, I won't get into that much details about CMake. You might be already familiar with it. But in a nutshell, uh, we can think of CMake as a, a man management tool for your, for your software uh, like project that handles all the dependencies, handles the way that it will compile, and, and it has all great advantages. Uh, but the thing for now that is useful for us is the last part. So it's a, in a context of a Juice plugin, it's a way to interact from the command line terminal because we are giving instructions to the GitHub Actions pipeline just via commands, right? So uh, there are a lot of great resources on CMake. Feel free to come back to this slide later to check out. And I, I will skip this one. And okay, how these things work in GitHub Actions? The intuition is, is the following: we have some triggered event that will start some process after that. For example, a trigger event that uh, will run something we call job that does some stuff. And after that job, a job too that, do, that does some other stuff. And we can think of this as maybe the trigger event would be a push to the main branch. And the first job maybe is to, to build the plugin and you run the steps in order to build the plugin. And the second job is to deploy the plugin. Once it's built, uh, to upload somewhere in your website, for example, to share the, 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 the compiled version of your plugin. Okay? So how, how we conf configure this? We use something called YAML, which is a, a, a end markup language, which is a, it's a human readable uh, Description file that is often used for configuration file that you can read if you're a human and you define some parameters. Okay, this is the, the things for that audio programming. You have this name, you have this skill set, the common settings and stuff. And we will use uh, to configure our pipeline for our just plugin. And this would be the very first case for, for our plugin, which uh, its YAML configuration would look something like this. And as you can see, at the top, we define the runner, and these examples are mostly made on Mac, but it, those could be easily uh, translated to other operating systems, so don't worry about it. So as you can see, uh, every, every little box has its own configuration part in the YAML format. So for example, you configure CMake, and you run the, the commands in order to configure CMake. You build the, program, the plugin, you run these commands, and you upload to artifacts, which is the storage that you can use from GitHub Actions in order to store the, the build version of your, of your plugin, okay? And, and GitHub Actions is actually quite nice that you can have this real-time uh, feedback. You can see the logs of, of the things that your current job is doing, so you can monitor in real-time, basically. It has, it's really nice. And if everything goes okay, at the end, on your GitHub, GitHub Actions report, you will have a little downloadable file which con will contain your plugin compiled in VST3, for example. This, this is already super nice. But let's, uh, this is not enough for sure. And uh, we can uh, increase a little bit the complexity. And let's make a second version of this pipeline that we can run uh, more steps and set the dependency across these steps. And as you can see, it's pretty similar. So uh, first things that we note is that we have these three boxes, which we will call jobs. And the first job might be to run a unit test before we compile, like if we run in a header only unit test kind of thing. Once, is, uh, once that's uh, done, you can see that uh, you can set the dependency. So maybe the build the build step will need the unit test the step before in order to run. And the third one as well will need the second one to be done in order to run again, okay? And uh, yeah, you can see uh, in, the, in the interface that the, the DAG, the dependencies are displayed in a, in a GUI manner, which is nice. And also you can make some complicated, more, a little more complex things, for example, to have conditions if you read the first line, this uh, job will only run if the, the commit message has that string on it. So you can set flags. Whatever you are going to deploy, you will need to put a Mac release flag in order to that step to, to run. And if you don't have that flag, so the pipeline, the rest of the pipeline won't, won't, jump, won't run, okay? So as you can see, you can start uh, increasing the complexity 
quite easily, and you can start. In, you can get control of, of where you are doing. So, if everything goes goes well, at the end you will have. Uh, sorry, and, and at the end I forgot to mention, you can create a, a, an installer. For example, this Mac, maybe a, create a DMG format, and at the end you will have uh, the artifact that contains that DMG file. So you have now an installer that contains the two uh, versions of the compiled plugin, which is the component, the AU, and the VST3. So this is super, super convenient. So uh, the, and this is, could be a, a really nice pipeline idea. You can go crazy, like maybe to, to do one thing uh, we built and then we run plugin validation that you can, you can run for sure. And you can decide whether if the plugin fails, do this, and if plugin succeed, do other things. So, it you can see that it quite easily gets super complex. And even you could start thinking, wait, wait, what if we open Reaper from the command line and we do some stuff? So uh, you can go super complex, even though you won't need that just right now. So, what I recommend is like this, a focus on the things that you really need for now. You remember that I mentioned that you have an awesome free tier. Well, that free tier is limited. And the first thing that you will notice if you are starting to use the free tier is that you could get run out of minutes computing power. So you will receive these nicely emails that 75 of your, of your uh, fee is already taken. So in order, we, we might need to focus on those things first before uh, going too complex on, on the pipeline, right? Um, so there are going, I'm going to show you some tips that I have learned uh, to, to optimize this, these things that we really need now. First of all, we can optimize the build process, for example, by running uh, the compilation with this flag that allows the CMake and with the Juice API to make the, the building in a parallelized manner. So you can put that and it will uh, run more, more fast, more fast. And for example, you, got, you also have a limited amount of storage that you can use. So you can configure your artifacts that it will delete uh, in a five days if you don't do that. If, so in five days, it will automatically remove those artifacts and you won't need to worry about those anymore. And maybe at the end, you can run like a, a full cleanup of your whole artifacts. So you, you, you have already a free space to use later, okay? And another pro tip, and this is a great, really great one, is you can use cache. You can cache your build process. So the first time you build, it, it takes the, the whole time to, to build the plugin. And a second iteration, if you don't make that much changes in the code base, it will have the cache version of the build and use it so the next, uh, the next compile will be faster. And this is a game-changing uh, thing that you can already implement in your even if you, you are not using um, GitHub Actions, this is a nice thing that you can use in just use. Okay? Uh, an example of this is, I, this is the, uh, basically the Hello World plugin that you get from, from the producer. And before caching, I, I got this, this time, uh, three minutes. And after caching, I, I got those results, which was one minute less that might not sound that much, but in those, in those numbers are maybe a 30% gain of, of time. So trust me, when the plugin becomes larger, it's, this is super nice. And another pro tip is that you can use uh, secrets in order to store uh, sensitive information. For example, uh, you can even integrate uh, maybe a webhook for, from Discord. So every time that you uh, build a new version of your plugin, you will receive a nice notification on Discord, like, hey, new plugin, fresh out of the oven. So, and you can store that webhook, which is a sensitive st string, into these secret variables that you can use in GitHub Actions. And let me present you your very first rock solid release pipeline that, you can, that I propose. So you can start to, to use it. Feel free to, to check the, the code for this. And when you basically, uh, make some tests, build the plugin using cache. After you create a DMGS installer, after that you create a repository release, 
uh, maybe a notification on Discord. So at the end, you will have a nice uh, installer that contains uh, your plugin stuff and it's ready to use. And you are already making a big progress in your plugin projects. So yeah, these are more or less the, the summary of the tips and tricks that I wanted to, to, to tell you. First is use a parallel to build your, your plugins. Use environment vars, secrets, use cache. Uh, maybe uh, uh, think a way of personalized notification, for example, uh, in, in Discord or the communication channels that you could, you could have with your clients. And we, we now have nice LLMs that we can use in order to debug, or uh, if you don't know how to do something, okay, hey, ChatGPT, how, how do I do this in, on GitHub Actions? And it will tell you quite nicely. It actually works very well. So is that it? Uh, Yes, but actually there's a lot of work to do. We present a basic case, which is we, we got an installer for Mac, which is nice, but that is not enough. You still need to do more work on top of that for things that uh, signing, notarization, for Windows you need EV certificates, and we haven't even talked about AAX, which is, we won't talk about that for now, okay? <laughs> so there is still a lot of work to do, but this is already a great start. And yeah, and the takeaways that I wanted to, to share with you is using CI/CD um, technologies in your in your audio plugins is great. Use it, please. Start to use it. Uh, use and experiment with these GitHub actions. Although be great, be creative, but uh, try to not complicate things if you don't need it just now. Uh, focus on the things you really need, and it's okay to do some stuff manually. It's about all of this about automation. But it's okay to do some still, like by hand, it's, it's fine. Make mistakes, learn, share, and most importantly, ha have fun, okay? So uh, yeah, the, these are cool resources that I wanted to, to, to share with you. Feel free to, to reach out. There are a lot of great open source uh, plugins that you can, that has already an implementation of, of pipelines, so you can feel free to borrow ideas. Borrow, okay? And, and yeah. Uh, that was it. Thanks a lot for you. I want to thank the ADC team, my, my, my mates, my friends, my mom, for sure, and especially you for your attention. So, thanks a lot. <laughs> <laughs>